5 BP Guru. Today, so what we want to be looking at is um, how to transfer ourselves into our kind of uh, encounter arena. I'm going to call it the encounter arena. I think that's a good name. Um, <laughs> so far, what we have is um, if we go into our creatures and open our encounter BP, what we have is this, um, what we set up in the last couple of episodes. So when we come in range of the box, now I haven't set up a stepping kind of timer yet. Um, I will add that probably in the next couple of episodes. But we cast to our creature master. It goes through all of its children. And it tells me if it matches with our encounter list we've got set up. If it's true, it will add those, each one uniquely, to its individual array, whether it's the normal encounter or a shiny encounter array. Then it runs, when it's all done, when it's all done, it will pick an encounter. So when it's complete and it's done all that, it will pick our encounter for us. <clears throat> First thing it does is roll for the shiny, so whether it should be shiny uh, creature or not. Uh, and then, depending on whichever one it, it kind of comes up with, it will pick that array and then set it as our selected actor. <clears throat> we know this is happening purely based on the fact we put we print that class string, so it pulls up that an individual class. Now. What I've done so far is we obviously had that encounter, encountering boolean we set we never used. So I've set that to true, so that the the game knows that um, we are encountering this creature, and then it opens up the new level, which I've called Grass Battle Level, for now. Then, well, let's play now and just show you kind of what that does for us. Now I've set up a uh, obviously a world that's very small it's just for the battle so if we press play oh something's happened let's try it again there we go if we press play and we go into it, it cr it's obviously showed me that it's picked tail flame and then it puts me into my position now there's obviously a lot more to come on into here now with um things like uh, battle cameras and spawning in the next creatures but that's how we get our character into there which is what we were looking at today so all we need to do is set ourselves to encountering and then we open the level but we now need to define where he sits on that level so I've opened up the level blueprints now we have to open up obviously the the correct level so let's head over into our battling grass world save selected now it's very basic for the moment this is just so I could get up and I'm basically just trying to set up all the code before I do all the lovely kind of artwork so we have where our trainer sits we have where our ringmon sits here and we have the ringmon we're encountering sitting here um, and what we want to do is open up those level blueprints first now um, what I have done is I've gone down and I've given them individually <clears throat> a tag each. Why can't I go down further? Right, there we go. Um, so this is um, Wild Ringmon Spawner. There shouldn't be an R at the end of that. Um, wild Ringmon Spawn. We have our Player Ringmon Spawn. And then I've called this one player spawn. Now, if I open up the level, so far all I've set, all I've set up is for our player to be spawned in. Uh, I am working on getting the creature spawned in. So, ignoring the top half here, because this is where I'm trying to spawn in 
Oh, creature. I haven't quite... Well, that doesn't help, does it? That should be... Um, wild. That might be an issue there. <laughs> so, we've got this bit down here that obviously gets our player character and spawns our player character at the pawn spawn. Player spawn. Um, and it'll set the actor transform facing the direction that we wanted our player to start. So it does all that for us, which is really good. Um, and this one is looking for this player spawn. And it should be spawning our selected encounter via its class. And we know it's got the right class because um, it shows us at the end. So if I press start now, now I'm going to run around. But there's literally nothing there. And it should do that on the event begin play. There's one other thing we need to do here, by the way, um, that we haven't been doing um, before we open the level. Is um, we can get rid of this print string. So we know, we know, we know this um, uh, selected encounter is being saved. We know that it's going to be her badger or, or one of the three stars we need to encounter. So let's, um, let's make ourselves a bit of space. We're setting encountering to true. So we know we're going to load a level. So what we need to do. <coughs> is um, we need to uh, define where our player was originally. Um, get player controller. Uh, we need to define um, where the player f sort of was before we move on. Uh, now this won't matter now but it will matter down the line when we when we want to return back uh, to when we want to return back to where we were originally now we can't use player starts like I do in the level transitions because you it, it needs to define where the player was when we last were in the world so Let's um, open up our third person character. We haven't really done much in our third person character at this point because there's really not a great deal to do um, in it. But what we do need to do is still run some variables through here. So we want player location. And that can be a vector. And we want uh, player rotation. And that can be um a, ve uh, a rotator sorry a rotator Kapal. and um right now all we need to do is set location um and set our rotation And this is how you would store this for any of these situations. Um, whether it's going into any battle, any um, um, encounter, cutscenes, any of that sort of stuff for this sort of game, you would um, do it this way. Location. Oh. Um, let's pull it off here. Get player location no get actor rotation is one of them and we can plug that straight in like so and we we just want to get get actor location and plug that in it, it really doesn't matter what the values are because when we spawn uh, well, whatever we end up on is what we want to restart on. So if we're facing left, we want that rotation and that location. If we're facing forward, we want that location and that location. And it will just copy that value straight over. And we can copy and paste that for both um, both ones, and it will work just the same. <clears throat> and we want to do that every time we...
do an encounter, every time we want to do a battle, every time we want to play a cutscene, we need to remember where our player last was stood um, before we come back. So we run this code now in order to open up a new world. Um, these store these values will be stored. We won't ever re-save them in any capacity. And then when we end our encounter and we unload that level, we want to tell them where we were. So we'll re we'll set a new actor spawn location. We'll open the level up, then we'll spawn our character in to these coordinates on our map. That's how we will do that. So now that's done, we, we've, we've basically finished up our encounter section. The next thing we want to do now is um, just fix our character, our Ringmon spawning in. So we've done the play, the play is working fine. We just now need to define spawning these actors in to its location. Um, once we've done that, we can then work on widgets um, for capturing creatures. Uh, we can then also work on getting a team set up for the player so that we can then fight them and capture them. And then we can basically work on adding creatures to our team. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is an array, so like just like we are with the encounter setup. So it's going to be like your team has a max array of six is the array full? Yes. If so, put it into this box, which can hold 30 creatures. Um, and you'd have an array for every um, box you have in your PC. So if you have eight boxes, you have eight arrays, all called box one, box two, box three, box four, etc. And they all hold 30 creatures in each one. Um, and if one's full, It'll check if one's full, if one's full, it moves on to the next one. That's basically my thought process as we're going through the series, is how I'm going to do everything. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so next is just getting these ringmon spawned into the two locations. We want the player ringmon, which will always take the first creature of our array. And um, if that's got no health, it'll take the next one. Um, and then the encounter array is the encounter array. Once we've got this in place, it should theoretically be the same sort of thing for uh, battling as well. It's just using, you would just create an array of creatures for each person you face. But we'll, we'll cover all of that as we go along. But yeah, sorry this was a short one. Um, but at least we've got the player now in our battle arena. It's now just a case of getting the... Um, <clears throat> the... Um, wild one in there the wild encounter in there and then we can work on we can move on then for that from that point to working on our team array and our a box array and then it's just kind of putting all that together to finish the encounters which is having the the both of them spawn in having a team and also we can then work on some fun stuff like battling and stuff like that and, and kind of looking at particle effects so we're nearly through the kind of boring setup -y bit and then we'll be into some more interesting stuff. But thanks so much guys for watching. Don't forget to like, uh, comment and uh, of course if you're not, subscribe. Uh, it's free to do. You can always change your mind. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye bye.